Areasports.net proudly presents The Sports Couch. The Sports Couch, one of the area's longest running local sports talk shows, featuring interviews with area coaches, athletes, and other media personnel covering the sports in our area. Who will be on the couch this morning? Let's find out. The Sports Couch starts now. Hello again, sports fans, and welcome to a special edition of The Sports Couch here on Areasports.net, where today we are going to be taking a look at a little preview of the upcoming Cesar Holiday Tournament, which will start the day after Christmas. That's Tuesday, December 26th. That's a little bit different format this year as they have pared down the number of teams in the Cesar Tournament this year from 16 teams to 8 teams. Now, some people have been critical of Cesar for doing that. I, for one, applaud them. I think it was a great move and something that needed to be done. And maybe other tournaments might want to think about that. Here's the, here's the situation, all right? When you have 16 teams in a tournament, it's very hard to have 16 teams that are very competitive. So what happens is you have a lot of blowout games that happen in the first round. Uh, that had been happening at Cesar, and it happens year in and year out down at El Dorado. I mean, nobody wants to watch games where it's a 40- or 50-point blowout in the first round. That's not good for the players, the coaches, the fans, broadcasters. Nobody likes that. And, you know, that happens so often down at El Dorado, and it was happening at Cesar as well, that, um, you know, it was just time to pair it back and make it a more competitive tournament with eight teams. And that's what they've done this year at Cesar. And it also makes it a little bit easier for them to, to manage and run, too, as far as the number of, um, you know, volunteers and people behind the scenes that it takes to, to put on uh, a tournament like that. So I really applaud Athletic Director Chip Basso and everybody there at Cesar for pairing it back to eight teams. And what a tournament it's going to be this year because uh, those eight teams really are competitive. In fact, five of the eight teams have a winning record. Uh, and then there, I think there's a sixth team that's just one game below 500 um then you have three of the eight teams that are state ranked so uh you know it's pretty hard to find uh, tournaments that have uh, three state ranked teams in them particularly a tournament with just eight teams in the tournament so again it's going to be a very competitive tournament that's going to take place starting on tuesday december 26 goreville will be the number one seed this year redbud is the number two seed waltonville who is still unbeaten is the number three seed and altamont is the number four seed we will be talking to coaches from all of those uh, four teams this morning we'll be talking to coach anthony lowry of waltonville coach john nieberge of altamont coach uh, dane walter of redbud and coach todd tripp of Goreville. And we'll have our first coach interview coming up after this 30 second timeout. Jingle all the way home and sing about your savings. I'm singing! By shopping at Box Drop of Salem. And save at Box Drop of Salem, where all items are marked way down. It's worth the drive to Salem to see it, try it, and take it home before it's gone. First come, first serve, so don't forget about your reindeers and sleigh. I mean, your truck and trailer. Box Drop of Salem, locally owned, cares by giving back and helping the community. Located in the Orchard Shopping Center on the south end of Salem. Check them out on Google and watch for the latest posts on Facebook. Welcome back to our preview of the Cesar Valier Holiday Tournament here on Areasports.net. We're talking to each of the four coaches from the top four seeds of this year's tournament, which begins on December 26th, the day after Christmas. That's Tuesday, if you're keeping track. <laughs> okay. Uh, joining us, first of all, this morning is the head coach of the Altamont Indians, and that's John Niebury. John, good morning. Good to have you on the show. Good morning. Appreciate it. Great. Good to have you. Uh, you're having a good season so far, but uh, hey, before we talk about this season, uh, we got to touch a little bit upon last season because, good grief, John, you had such an incredible year last year with your Altamont Indians, and you were just a, just a, phew, just a glimmer away from uh, making it down to the Super Sectional and that four-overtime game there with Tuscola. People still talk about that game. Yeah, I mean, we had a great group of seniors. Um, we lost seven of them last year. Uh, we won everything we wanted to. You know, they won. If, if, if you can say you had a great season and still a little bit disappointed at how it ended, I mean, we, we, we they were. Um, but uh, you know, we, a year removed, you kind of look back and you're like, it, it, it was uh, it was special. It was the first first uh, sectional win in Aldermont's program, and uh, you know, we could add a could add, you know, it was a, a four overtime game. Could have went either way. Obviously, you know that the two loudest game 
I've ever been involved in were those two games that uh, in the sexual versus Casey and Tesco. So um, they, they were they were a special group. Uh, we, we did some special things last year, but yeah, we were it was a fantastic season. Yeah, twenty nine and five. I think is what you finished up last year, wasn't it, John? Yes, yes. Yeah. We started five and three, and then went on a went on a big old run at there, and uh, you know lost to Tuscola twice at the end yeah. of the season. But it was it was good. They were a good team. Yeah. Well, how ironic because you're sitting at five and three right now, I believe, aren't you? Exactly, exactly. And then uh, these boys, you know, it's some of their some of these guys didn't get a lot of time last year. They're all seniors mostly, and uh, you know, it's basically their eighth varsity game. So we're still kind of learning, and uh, but. But doing well on the season so far. Yeah, well, before we talk a little bit more about this season, I want to also uh, back up just a little bit and talk about a game this past week where you beat Marshall, a 2A team, uh, 56-51. to And with that win, you become the all-time winningest coach in Altamont Indians basketball history. So congratulations for that, John. I appreciate it. It's, uh, you know, I, when I first got interviewed, one of the interviewers, one of the principal that hired me was, you know, what, you know, what, and my goal was to, to do that, I, you know, obviously you don't know what's going to happen um, uh, when that be, when, when if through the, through the years. But you know, we we've really appreciated the the life we've created here and the people that have played for me and have become young, great young men. And you know, the wins just come by by a byproduct of a, the, them guys working hard for me along the way. Yeah, you've had some great players come through Altamont. There's no question about that. Well, again, you're sitting at 5-3 and three this year. You're the number four seed in the Altamont tournament. Uh, you are uh, ranked number 13 in the state in the latest uh, Nesto Hoops poll. And, you know, even though you're 5-3, and three, you look at those losses. I mean, you lost just some <laughs> very quality teams in Carlisle and, and Casey Westfield. And in the meantime, you've beaten a couple 2A teams in, in uh, Marshall and Vandalia. So uh, you're having a good season so far. Yeah. We, I, I wouldn't say we have a notable win, but we don't have a bad loss right now. Um, you know, we don't have that that win yet that put us put us on the radar on the map. But you know, being 13 in the state, we, you know, those rankings are great. We're still learning. Um, you know, Newton's a really good team. Uh, they're 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 playing. They're going to be a, a factor in the in the T town regional and sectional. So. Um, that wasn't a bad loss. Casey's, they just played Tuscola to a two point game also. So, uh, you know, that we're, we're on the edge of becoming a really good, we're just still kind of learning, getting better. You know, you've, you're in a kind of a little hotbed of 1A basketball up there, too, because, you know, obviously you got St. Anthony in your same conference there, the National Trail Conference. And then, you're, again, you're not too far away from, from Tuscola and Casey Westfield and, and uh, Dietrich and some others. So, that's kind of a, a class 1A hotbed of basketball up there where you're at, isn't it? Yeah, we like our our conference has been really good outside of the conference in the past few years. Um, St. Anthony's, I mean, they're they're the perennial in our conference. Uh, you know, Coach Rinker does a good job there, so it's kind of you know you're gonna have to run through them through our conference, and, and they've got a state title on their on their uh, uh, resume. So um, these are always good, you know. But uh, our, our, I felt like last year our section was crazy good. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, with you know, Chrysler Rock was really good, you know, yeah. down there. So, right. Um, but we, you know, we know, we know we're going to, KZ, Tescola this year, and Sandy are kind of the three big dogs that we're going to have to kind of see if we're going to go any further. Yeah. Well, you know, I think it's great for you to come down here and participate in this Cesar Valier tournament because you have a chance to go up against some other 1A teams down in this neck of the woods, and it's teams that you potentially could see down the road, you know, in a sectional or a super sectional. So the Cesar tournament's a good one for you to be in, isn't it? 100%. And that's the reason why, you know, in, in the past that I was like, I got to get – we got to get to that to the south and play a little bit of basketball down there because it's good basketball. And you know the Cesar Valier tournament through the years has been a really good indicator of who's going to go to the one A you know super. Um, you always got Goreville and Christopher's a program and Cesar Valier is a program that you're you know you see at the top usually. And uh, so through the years, uh, you know Goreville's playing pretty well. They're on a hot streak, and but uh, you know usually there's a good team down there that you might see at the section you know, the super sectional right absolutely well again uh of the four seeds this year you are the the fourth seed but then you've also got unbeaten uh, waltonville sitting there at the third seed you got uh, redbud who's having a good year as a two seed and goreville is the one seed and you know three of those four seeds are also state ranked so that just shows you the the level of talent and level of play we're going to see this year at Cesar. 
Yeah, it's, uh, you know, they dropped it to eight, but it, 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 the first round might not be a you know blowout this year. So right. we're gonna have to right. we're gonna have to come play. We're do coins do coins no slouch two way. They're they're gonna they've played some really good tough teams in Pinckneyville, but yeah, Goreville's good. Welton Waltonville's I think ahead of schedule right now, and they're uh, and what they're thinking about you know in a few years, a bunch of sophomores playing pretty pretty good basketball, and and Redbud plays a really tough schedule, and that coach has really got them trending upward. So, you know, all three games this year, we're, we're, if we get out of a third-place game down there, I think we've we've done well. So, uh, you know, we're you're going to have to play three quality games to come out with some trophies down there. No, I agree with you. Well, let's talk a little bit about your team this year. You mentioned you lost seven seniors last year to that great team that went 29-5, and five, but the guys that you have coming back – you got some size you can put on the floor, don't you? I mean, you can stick uh, six two, six four, six five out there if you choose to. Yeah, um, these guys have you know they were good when they were in junior high. We knew we had a good group. Um, they just kind of behind another good group. Um, Dylan Elam's, you know, he's a one through four type player. He can play every position for us. You know, a six three, uh, two ten, plays big, plays can, but can handle the basketball. And and we got Caden Miller, who's just He's kind of our X factor. He's six five, but he can step out and shoot and post. And he, he, he's a, he's a rebounding machine. We love. He, he's a coach's dream. And Eli Miller is a coach's dream. Um, Aiden McManaway. The, the, they're all kids that. Well, I never question their effort. Um, they're just there's this now starting to learn varsity basketball. Yeah. Well, and the thing is, it sounds like they're coachable kids. And boy, when you've got coachable kids that are eager to learn and willing to learn from you, that makes it so much fun for you, doesn't it? Yeah, they're they're coachable. They 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 hear a lot of static. You know, they're my my practices aren't the easiest, and we we get after them, but uh, they never back down. They're 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 willing to learn. They're willing to to take to take the beating in practices um, and make the games come even easier. So uh, these kids these kids practice hard as possible. They're 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 banged up. They look like they're about forty years old sometimes when they're running, but they 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 play hard. Well, I mentioned you've beaten a couple of 2A teams already in, uh, in Vandalia and Marshall, and that's who you're going to face a 2A team in DuCoin in the first round there at Cesar. So that should be a, an interesting contest in your opening round down there at Cesar. Yes, sir. Like I, you know, this is the, I'm now watching film on DuCoin, and they're going to they're going to be tough. They're going to they're going to they're quick. They got some shooters. Um, so we, we struggle a little bit when some when penetration happens. Uh, you know, stay in front of a little bit. Um, so. If we get broken down, we're going to have to play. We're going to, have to play some fundamentally sound defense uh, on on Tuesday to, to to make sure the dribble penetration doesn't affect us too much and break us down. So mm-hmm. DeCoin's, DeCoin's going to be a tough team. Yeah, it's going to be a great tournament. We look forward to seeing your team play, John. Appreciate the time this morning. Merry Christmas to you and your family, and we'll see you on Tuesday at Cesar. Okay. Sounds good. Merry Christmas to you all. Thank you. Appreciate it. Bye bye. That is Coach John Nieberge of the Altamont Indians. They are the four seed at the Cesar Valdez Holiday Tournament. And when we come back in 30 seconds, we'll interview another coach for you right here on areasports.net. Southern Illinois Tile and Carpet Supply in Mount Vernon is ready to help you update your home. Need new carpeting? They have many styles and colors in stock as well as expert installation. Add beauty to your home with new hardwood or vinyl planks available at Southern Illinois Tile and Carpet. They will completely transform the look of any room in your home. Update your bathroom with a custom shower. There are many tile styles and colors to choose from. Does your kitchen need a facelift? You can get a new backsplash, flooring, and more at Southern Illinois Tile and Carpet Supply, 513 South 10th Street in Mount Vernon. Open six days a week. Welcome back to this special edition of the Sports Couch here on Areasports.net as we preview the Cesar Lear Holiday Tournament. That begins on Tuesday. That's the day after Christmas. And the Waltonville Spartans, who are perfect 9-0 on the season, they are the number three seed of the tournament this year. And joining us on the phone right now from practice, I believe, is uh, head coach Anthony Lowry of the Spartans. Good morning, Anthony. How are you? Good morning. I'm doing good. How are you? All right. We, got, we caught you working out with the guys. You're getting ready for the tournament, huh? Yeah, yeah. You know, the, uh, we, we're going to have about 10 days between our, our last game and our first game Tuesday, so uh, these guys are hungry and 
Uh, we're just wrapping up here at 11 o'clock and uh, trying to get ready for, for a tough week over there at Sasser. Yeah, no doubt. It's going to be a good tournament this year. It's been pared down from 16 to 8 teams, but the the 8 teams are extremely competitive. you got 5 of the 8 that are uh, have winning records, and of course 3 of the 8 are state ranked, including your Spartans, and so some very good competition. All the games you play are going to be tough. Absolutely. You know, it's uh, it's perfect for us. You know, it, it, it mid you know, late late December here, we won't really want to see where we're at. Nice little uh, snapshot of, of of some things that we can improve on for the stretch run of the year, and uh, we're looking forward to some, some amazing basketball. You know, uh, um, the top, like you said, the top five seeds, in my opinion, are, are loaded. Um, even our our seven, eight, nine um, are, are pretty good basketball teams, and 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 you just never know over there, and so. Um, it's going to be a tough week for us, but like I said, I'm excited just to see a little measuring stick here for us, and um, it'll be great to, to have some of this competition on film and, and see some things that we need to improve on and, and just keep grinding away. And uh, These guys, man, I, like you said, fishing up practice on a Saturday on, on Christmas break, and um, can't run them out of here. We've been done for a little bit, and they're they just in here still competing, so... Uh, it's a, it's a good time. Good that, time that's great. Important. That's great. Well, you know, you had a, like you said, you've had a little bit of a lull right now. You haven't played in a while, and I'm sure the guys are anxious to get back on the court and play somebody. Yeah, absolutely. Like I said, uh, uh, our last few days of practice, we just really been preaching competing with each other. And, and when you got the guys that I do the, with the character that they did, they have, and, you know, I'm I'm not too worried about any rust or anything like that. They've been locked in the whole time, and um, and and when you got 25 of them with, that. that that want to compete and get better. Um, our practices are, are as competitive as a lot of games, and so uh, we've been grinding away, ready to get back at it, and ready to get them on the floor again. All right. Well, let's talk about your season so far. You're you're nine and zero, uh, and you were champions of the Christopher Thanksgiving tournament. First time you'd won that in a long, long time, and then you got a quality win at home against uh, Fairfield, a two A team this year. So, um, yeah. y- you know. Um, you know you haven't you haven't lost anybody yet, but uh, you've had some tight games, but you found ways to win even in those tight games. Yeah, you know that's one of the things I'm most I'm most proud of. You know, um, it's easy to forget how young we still are for the most part. You know, we got mm-hmm. three seniors, um, but you know, outside of that, we play a lot of sophomores. Uh, you know, a junior plays a lot of minutes for us, and then we got some freshmen that play a lot of minutes. So it's easy to forget how young we are. And last year we were in a ton of games like that. You know, tight down the stretch. And we just kind of found ways to lose them because we were so young. Um, but this year, you know, I think that, that it's a testament to how hard they worked this summer um, and, and who they are and how they've grown. And, and we're finding ways to win those games now. And, uh, you know, don't get me wrong, it'd be, it'd be real nice for me to be able to kick back and relax. But, um, you know, it, it's also good for us to be in a tight game all the time. And so uh, we've, we found ways to win, like I said, and, and that's what's important. That's what you want to see. And, and they, they, like I said, every day in practice, they get after each other. And I think that's why we're, we're able to find ways to win those games instead, instead of losing like we did a little bit last year. So, All right. Um, so I'm real proud of where we're at, and we're just looking forward to getting better every day. Right. Well, Gage Peterson, your, your post player, one of those sophomores, uh, he's got some of the finest footwork that uh, you'll find on a post player in Southern Illinois, really. And, he's, again, he's just a sophomore, but he can also step out and – and then shoot the long jumper too, and then Kyle Cooper. He's just you know such a penetrator, but a good distributor too, and a great outside shooter. So he brings you a lot of weapons. But um, you know, I think that uh, each time I see you play, I'm seeing more out of uh, senior Seth Carnes too. You know, he had that ACL surgery almost a year ago, last February, and and uh, but he keeps getting stronger all the time. He seems to be moving a little bit better each time I see him play, and and so uh, uh, that's good. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that's been a, 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 a catalyst for us to kind of take an off here, you know, and, and uh, I hadn't planned on having him in the starting lineup and his minutes being this big um, at this point of the season, but he worked so hard. He, is, he has always been a worker ever since, his, you know, he came across the parking lot with me. I mean, he, he, he almost wears you out. He just wants to be in the gym all the time. And for him to be where he's at, you know, nine, ten months, Post surgery is really unbelievable, mm-hmm. and you know, and his conditioning is catching up now, and so, um, his, so his minutes are stretching out even before I, I had planned on him, and so I'm really proud of him. Um, and, and, and maybe the most important thing that 
that he brings to us that a lot of people don't realize is his leadership. You know, he's our captain. Um, he's, he's the most vocal defender we have, and he really leads by example on that stuff. And, and, and those, those younger guys are seeing how he goes about it, and they hadn't seen it. You know, last year he only got to play, you know, eight or nine games with us before he got hurt. And so, you know, our younger guys are really starting to kind of realize what it takes to be that type of leader, um, and, and they're starting to fall in line with him. And, and I'm so proud of how hard he works, like I said, and his conditioning, like I said, is getting so much better. Um, so his minutes can stretch out, and, and that has been a huge benefit to us on both ends of the floor, um, like you mentioned. So um, we're looking to keep him uh, keep him healthy. You know, that's, right. that's the key, but uh, get him healthy into the postseason. But uh, uh, he, he's forced my hand, and I can't take him out. So Yeah, no, I get it. Uh, he just, yeah, it just gets better every day. I so. get it. You know, I think it's kind of cool. Uh, you know, you had the night off the other night, but where do I see you at? I see you at a basketball game, and you're there watching the uh, Mount Vernon Rams and Titopolis Wooden Shoes go at it in a big battle there at Shagnon Gym. But, you know, it's it's games like that that you as a coach can come to, and you might pick up something that you can implement in, in your uh, in your game and with your team. So, I mean, it's you never stop learning as a coach, do you? No. Nope. No, you don't. And I, that was that – was, a game I'd had circled on my calendar for a long time when I had a little time off here. And, um, you know, my, my, uh, my nephew was being born, and so we were sitting around waiting on him to get here. So, um, you know, I, I slapped my son on the hip. I said, hey, let's go watch a good basketball game. And, and he, he was just tickled to death to see wooden shoes as, as, a, as a mascot. He thought that was cool. He's like, you know, and then, and then to watch that high-quality basketball game on a Wednesday night, I mean, you just can't beat that. And so – uh, and I have a lot of respect for Coach Holloway of Mount Vernon. I had a, a, the blessing of working with his boys when I was at Rome. And so, um, you know, I felt like we got pretty close there. And, and so I always root for them. And, 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 you know, Mount Vernon's got a heck of a team this year, a lot of guys that I've, I've known for a long time. So, yeah, what, what, what better than to go watch the Rams in T-Town on a Wednesday night yeah. more often? Right. And I had several guys tuned into the, to the WMIX stream. So, sure. Um, Yep. Good stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. That was a good, good physical game, and the Rams came out on top. But it was a fun one yep. to watch. It sure was. All right. Yep. Well, uh, after the uh, Sessler tournament, you jump right into uh, Midland Trail Conference play again. And and uh, yep. while you may be uh, one of the favorites in the conference, it's it's no gimme, is it? No, no. Like I said, uh, that first week back, you know, even before we start school on on that Tuesday night, we we go down to Crab Orchard, which. That's not ever an easy test. They, they, you know, they play such a different brand of basketball. It's hard to get the guys, you know, to, to realize what we're going into. And then, um, like you said, we got Weber and Wayne City here that that mm-hmm. weekend, Friday and Saturday. And, and boy, Weber's playing some awesome basketball right they now. Are. Coach Helms done a great job with them. Um, and their their only lo- their only loss is to you, you know. So yeah, yeah, yeah you right. know. And, and that's why I keep telling people, you know, that 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 win looks a lot better every single game that they play. I mean, they just, uh, they, they scrap so hard and play so hard. That's going to be a tough one. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Coach Talbert will have, have Wayne City ready to come in here too. And so we know we're going to get, we're going to get everybody's best shot every night, you know. So um, I, I don't think, I don't think our guys, and that, that's one thing I give my guys credit for. They don't look ahead. They don't look ahead. You know, they're, they're not talking about Red Bud yet or Sessor. They're talking about Marissa and, and we're working on stuff for that, and so we got to take it one day at a time, and um, you know, just plug away, and then we'll see who's next on the on the on the docket, and get practice time in for them, and and grind away through the Midland Trail, and uh, get into some of our shootout time. So well, and you know, Marissa is no pushover. They're they're a good basketball team. They're seven and three, yeah. so uh, yeah. you know they're they're coming they're coming to play. They're coming to try to win. Absolutely, you know, we know. We, I, I've, I've seen them on film and, and, and watched them down at, at Christopher, and, and they got some guards that can flat out play, and you know that's something we got to get prepared for. And the good news for us is they're they're similar to Red Bud. They got a, a really good point guard and then a long, lanky, you know, athlete who's a, who's a flasher and can shoot a little bit. And so both teams kind of have that. And then Sessor's the same way. You know, um, they got a big, strong kid that that can play the guard for them, and then um, a little bit of length. So you know, it's it's. That's beneficial to us, um, but win, lose, or draw, all, all three games down there are going to be great tests for us, mm-hmm. and we know it's a means to the end and, and to get better for the postseason. And, right. Uh, we're just going to go down there and compete and, and 
try to come out on top of it. All right. Well, we'll let you go and get you back to practice with the guys and uh, look forward to seeing you down there on Tuesday as we'll be covering uh, most of the games down there at the Cesar Tournament. So we'll see you on Tuesday. And Merry Christmas to you and your family, all right? Hey, Merry Christmas to you, Andy. Thank you. Thank you, Anthony. All right. Bye-bye. Anthony Lowry, the head basketball coach of the Waltonville Spartans. They are the number three seed in the Cesar Valier Tournament, and they are 9-0 and on the season and having a good year. And uh, they gave Weber their only loss this year. And, yeah, he, what he was talking about with the Weber Trojan Jack, keep your eye on those guys this year. They are a good, good basketball team. Had a chance to cover them, uh, I think, about four times now. And, and they get better every time I see them. So uh, while they're not in this tournament, they are going to be a force in 1A basketball, too, here in southern Illinois. Stay tuned. When we come back after this 30-second timeout, we will have another interview with another coach from the Cesar Valer Tournament, all just ahead on this special edition of the Sports Couch. King City RV in Mount Vernon is your one-stop shop for maintenance and repair of your RV. Whether it's a bumper camper, fifth wheel, or motorhome, Bill Schulte and the staff at King City RV can help you. They provide winterizing of your RV, washing and waxing services, service work on brakes and tires, repair or replace awnings, service work on your slide outs, and much more. They even repair and clean horse trailers at King City RV, 801 Dogwood Drive on the south edge of Mount Vernon. Call area code 618-731-6185 for King City RV. Welcome back to a special edition of the Sports Couch, where today we are previewing the Cesar Valier Holiday Tournament, which begins on Tuesday. That's the day after Christmas, and it's going to be a very competitive tournament this year with just eight teams in it instead of 16. But of those eight teams, you've got, uh, well, you got five with winning records, and you have three of the eight teams that are state-ranked. And so, uh, yeah, highly competitive indeed. And uh, we're going to talk to the coach of the second-seeded Red Bud Musketeers right now. That's Dane Walter. He joins us on the show. Good morning, Dane. Good to have you. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. You bet. And, uh, hey, your, uh, your Red Bud team is off to a good start. You're 8-3 and three this year. you got to be pretty happy the way things are going so far, huh? Yeah, we're off to a good start. I mean, um, had, a, had, a, had a hot start there at the Trico Tournament, you know, and, and beat a pretty good Carterville team. And, uh, you know, they gave us some confidence right away um, getting right into the season. Oh, I, absolutely. You know, I think that's a, that's a big win when you can beat a 2A, sometimes 3A team like Carterville. And actually, Carterville is the one seed down at the El Dorado tournament. So uh, you've beaten them, and so has Goreville. So that, uh, that bodes well for the top two seeds here at, uh, at Cesar Valier. Right. That just speaks to how good this tournament is this year. Yeah, it is. You know, and, you know, some people were criticizing the fact that they had pared it down from 16 to 8, but actually I think it was a good move because it makes every single game competitive from the get go, and you're not going to have those first round, typical first round blowouts that you see at a lot of tournaments. And you got to come ready to play uh, day one, don't you? That's it. I mean, and it, it, what I like about it is it's still bracket play. You know, it's not pool play. Mm-hmm. You know, it still has a lot of excitement to it with the bracket. No, I agree with you. I agree with you. Well, I think last year you had to replace what six or seven seniors off your team last year. That's a that's a lot to replace. But uh, I think you've got one of your better players back this year, and so uh, you obviously have found the recipe, and things are going well. Right, we brought back uh, two of, two starters from last year's team, and, and two of our better guards from last year's team, um, and then and then everybody else. You know, we had a we had a really good junior class last year. Um, you know, they just had a good senior class ahead of them. So those guys have stepped up and filled the roles of last year's team well. Um, and uh, like you said, we, we've kind of got to figure it out early on here. One thing that we lack is, is a little bit of size, but, you know, we're, we're still competing well with everybody else that has size. Yeah, I, I look at your uh, your three losses. I mean, two of them were to really good teams, uh, Carlisle and, and Trent Westland. And, uh um, yeah, I mean, there's no shame in, in losing to them, but you were extremely competitive all the way through. Right, and that's just it. And you know, we go up to Carlisle, and they're starting six eight, six seven, six six, six five. I mean, across the board, and and the Mackey kids from from Trenton Westland is a, is a load in the post. Obviously, their guard plays excellent, but um, and then we lost to, to Waterloo, who has six ten and six eight. Wow! You know, and that that was that's our three losses. And again, everybody with with good size, we're rolling out uh, a couple. You know, six two is, is our best. Leafers, Leafers may be a little bit taller than that, 6'3", but, but whenever you're going up against consistent height, um, that's where we struggled. 
that's where we struggle the most. No, I, I can understand that. Well, in addition to beating Carterville, you got a, a good win against Chester. I think you beat a team from Festus, Missouri, too. So some good wins mixed in those eight wins that you have. Talk about your personnel a little bit, about uh, who are the guys that make you go and, and what you like about them this year. Well, we're just we're scrappy. We're scrappy. We're small, but we're, uh, we, we, we're very unselfish. I mean, if you look at our stat sheets, you're going to see six, eight, 10, 12 assists. I mean, we're, we're, we're sharing the ball well. We don't care who scores it as long as it goes in. And, and that's just it. We're, we're a close group. Uh, these guys do a lot of things together. And I think that that shows uh, on the court. You know, unselfish play, uh, that, that's a coach's dream. When you've got a bunch of guys that are unselfish like that, you've got to love that. Correct. It, it, you know, and what we're good is you take away our best player, okay, our, our second, third, and fourth are going to have double figures. You take away our top two, and, and we've had our, our, you know, our third starter, fourth starter, fifth starter, and double figures. So we've got guys who could score it. You've got you to pick your poison on what you want to take away from us. Uh, but but that we have a, you know, we do a nice job with the next guy stepping up and taking care of business. Mm-hmm. I know Sternberg re- returns for you this year from from last year, and he had a great year last year. Uh, has he been kind of your leading scorer this year as well? He is. Uh, he is our uh, uh, right now. He is our leading scorer. Um, Leifer was for the first uh, I don't know probably seven games. He was our leading scorer. He's averaging uh, darn near a double double for us. Uh, he's, he's like 9.7 or 9.8 rebounds per game also. So he was, he was our leading scorer for a while, too. So between those two, those are usually our leading scorer, one of the two. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, talk a little bit about the, uh, the Cicero Lear tournament. You're in the upper part of the bracket and uh, potentially could ha- have a date with the Waltonville if both of you come out of that, that first round. But, um, y- yeah, you've got uh, Cesar in your first round game, and I think that's the, what, 430 game, I think, on Tuesday. So, uh, that is the 4:30 game, and and, and and yeah, we're the two, they're the seven, but they're at home. I mean, it, yeah, and, and they you know they always play well at their own place, and you know the you know the, <laughs> excuse me, the fans are going to come out for them, and and the gym will be packed for a for a December 26 game, you know, for the, for their guys in their own gym. So that that won't be an easy you know a two seven. You know, look at that on paper, and you think that we're going to go in there and walk away with it. That's not always the case whenever you're playing Cesar at Cesar. Well, and they've got some size on that team too. I mean, their their record uh, can be deceiving because they they've got some size they can throw at you. Right, and that, and I that just that's what I just talked about. It's yeah, one thing that right. worries us. So yeah, no, I get it, I get it. Hey, I think I saw you uh, were at the Border War game last night, weren't you, Illinois Missouri? I was there last night. You yeah. had to enjoy yeah. the heck out of that with Illinois running away with it, huh? That was a uh, uh, the game was over from the start. I, yeah, w- I've been going to that. You know, a bunch of our family has for as far back as I can remember. So mm-hmm. it, it's been uh, been mixed. Last year wasn't as fun. This year, was, no, this year was a lot of fun. No, a complete reversal. A complete reversal beatdown this year for the Illini. It was. Yeah, no, the Illini uh, are, are going to be tough there in that Big Ten this year. It's gonna, they're having a good year so far. They should have a lot of fun. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, after the Cesarelier tournament, what do you got on the schedule? You jump back into Cahokia Conference play or what? We do hop back into conference play with uh, – we come right out with Oakville and then Sparta right away. Yeah. Sparta's not bad this year either. they got some athletes. Co- correct. And, and that's just it. You know, they, they lost their two best guys, and, you know, they've got some guys who are stepping up and, and playing well for them. They've got you know, some good underclass guys. And heck, heck, their freshmen's doing well, really well for them also. Yeah. Well, you mentioned the big guy at Westland is a load. Uh, they're in that, that division of the conference with you, aren't they, in Trent Westland? Yeah. 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 Yeah, so that's and then yeah, Westland, Carlisle, Chester, Oakville, Florida. And us. Yeah, you got some good rivals there going. It's a good. It's a good. It really is a good matchup. Uh, I think every year it's going to be going to be this way. Where you know, it's still anybody's game too. Even with Carlisle being where they four and zero in the conference already, or three and zero in the conference. Right. Right. Well, Dane, we appreciate your visit this morning and uh, wish you well at the Cesarelier tournament. Look forward to watching your Musketeers team play and. Uh, you have yourself a Merry Christmas, and we'll talk to you on Tuesday down at Cesar, all right? That sounds good. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dane. All righty. Bye-bye. Bye. It's Dane Walder. He is the head basketball coach of the Red Bud Musketeers. They are off to an 8-3 and three record. They are the two-seed at the Cesar Valier Tournament. They're in the upper part of the bracket, and they've got the host Cesar Valier Red Devils in the first-round game, which will be played on Tuesday afternoon. Stay tuned when we come back. After this 30-second timeout, we'll talk to another coach. 
here on this special edition of the Sports Couch. If you have some outdoor projects that need to get done around your home or your farm, you need to get to Carter Turf and Tractor, your local Kubota dealer in Wayne County and the surrounding area. Carter Turf and Tractor is your area dealer for high-quality Kubota tractors in a variety of sizes, perfect for a landscaping business or to easily handle a variety of jobs around your home or farm. They can customize a solution for your needs. They also have the Kubota RTV utility vehicles for on-road and off-road transportation and hauling needs. When there's mowing or lawn work to be done, Carter Turf and Tractor has you covered with Xmark riding mowers and walk-behind mowers. They also feature a good selection of Echo brand brush cutters, trimmers, and chainsaws, as well as Honda and Generac generators. Come in and see for yourself at the new Carter Turf and Tractor, open 8 to 5 Monday through Friday and 8 to 2 on Saturday. Welcome back to this edition of the Sports Couch, a special edition today as we preview the Cesar Valier Holiday Tournament, which begins the day after Christmas. That's Tuesday, December 26th. The Goreville Black Cats are the number one seed in the tournament this year, and with us on the phone right now is head coach of Goreville, Todd Tripp. Good morning, Todd. Great to have you on the show. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. You bet. Uh, hey, you're off to a great start this year, sitting at 9-1 and one coming into the tournament, and uh, you got to feel pretty good about that. We do. We feel good at uh, you know where we're at right now. Uh, feel like we played some good teams and got some uh, pretty good wins under our belt. Uh, and our only loss is to a really good Benton team. So uh, you know, win or lose, you, you want to learn from those games. And we felt like we did, and felt like we gave it a good effort. You know, we had a chance late in that game, down one with the ball a couple times. So you know, we felt pretty good about about where we're, things. The way things have been so far. Yeah, well, you were 24-10 and 10 last year, if memory serves me right. And I think you lost, what, three seniors last year? Is that right? Yes. Yeah, we lost three seniors. A lot, okay. lot, of, lot of guys coming back. So. Sure, yeah. I mean, you got Moss and Suits and uh, and your own son and, and several others. So uh, you've had a lot to, to build around this year. And uh, jumping off 9-1 and, and and beating a good Carterville team on your resume, that's a great way to start. Yeah, it's a very good win for us. I do want to correct you on one thing. That's my that's my cousin, not my son. Your so. cousin. I'm sorry. I'm yeah, sorry. Thank yeah, you. Man. No, that's all right. No big. I've it heard probably it happens a lot, times. doesn't it? Probably happens yeah, a lot. It does. It does. But uh, yeah, we uh, we you know the Carville win was a, a nice win at our place. You know, they they've had a good season, and uh, you know when a River River team is on your schedule and you got a chance to play them and. Uh, you get them. That's that's just a feather in your cap. So yeah, well, the Cesar Valier tournament's been uh, been carved back this year to eight teams, but actually, I think that was a good move because it's going to be eight very competitive teams. Uh, five of the eight have winning records, uh, and then three of the eight are state ranked right now, including your team. And so, uh, I think it's going to be very competitive even from day one. Yeah, you know, look, looking at that when they started talking about the eight teams, they approached me about it. You know, first off, it's it's hard to to put together tournaments, and there's so many tournaments now, and right. there's so many more teams you can't get anymore. So to have 16 teams in a small school tournament's tough. So you know, I, I understand what they did, and I think it's probably a good move for them. And like you said, I mean, you're, we're going into this knowing we're going to get three games that's competitive, and it's going to be tough every game. So we, we like that, and not only that. We, we lost the game there, but we were able to pick up a game elsewhere. Uh, like that first week of the season, we went to NCOE. So we, we, we really like that. So. Oh, yeah. Well, and again, you're going to have good competition in this tournament. I, I, like I said, three of the teams are, are state ranked right now. you got Altamont coming down from that hotbed up in, around the uh, you know, Effingham area, and they're always competitive yeah. in this tournament. So yeah. uh, there's going to be a lot for you there. You know, like you talk about Altamont, they're going to play Ducoin, and Ducoin's athletic, and I think they've only got two wins, but I know Coach up there at Altamont, and he, he's going in that game knowing if they don't play, they're in trouble. So, you know, that, that makes it exciting for this tournament. It makes it exciting for Sessor uh, yeah. to host this tournament. But, yeah, Altamont, you know, they lost they lost seven or eight guys last year. But, man, they just reload every year. They're, they're very good. They're well coached. And, you know, I'd look for them to be – they're going to be a hard out for people, I guarantee it. Yeah. And, and then, of course, uh, you, you've got Red Bud, which is off to a good start. I think they're 8-3. Oh, and yeah. three. And uh, Dane's yeah. doing a good job over there, and and uh, they've got some quality wins. And then you got Waltonville sitting there unbeaten so far at nine and zero. You know, Red Bud's got a lot of kids back too. They're guard loaded, and uh, yeah, he does a really good job over there. And they've got, you know, they beat Carterville Trico to win that championship over there. So, right. Uh, you better be ready to play them. And, and I'm Waltonville. I, I'm. I guess. I don't know. I'm kind of sick of saying, hearing people say, boy, they're young. They, I don't care how young they are. That post kid and that guard they have 
are two of the best players in Southern Illinois. They're really good players. They're smart. The post kid probably has as good a footwork as any kid I've seen. I agree. I in agree. The post, you know, and uh, you better be ready because they, they're not the only two on that team. They got they got kids that can shoot it and do other things. So mm-hmm. you know, you know, they're they're a very good team. So it's going to be interesting. There's four quality teams there, and I think any of us could win. Yeah, I agree. Well, let's talk a little bit about your personnel. I, I mentioned you got Moss and Suits that have come back, but go ahead and talk about your personnel and run through them and, and what you like about your guys this year. Yeah, you know, I really like this team. I like their work ethic. Uh, we just we have a lot of guys. And, and back in June, we talked about to the guys, hey, we're either going to play a lot of guys or we're not. So if you you, you know you're going to get some minutes or you won't get many at all. So it's it's finding the role on this team that we need to do, and I feel like they. They're coming into that, and they accept that. Uh, you know, Connor Craig is a, is a junior for us. At about six three, he's he's lanky and he can slash, and he's a he's having a good year for us. Drake Buxton's a six six kid, junior for us, just having a good year, and we feel like he's really coming along. And the better he gets, I, we feel like we are really getting better every time he gets better. Uh, I know you say that about all your kids, but he's a he's a important piece to us because you just you can't. Make kids bigger, so we, we're lucky to have a big kid like that to, to do some stuff. So, mm-hmm. but uh, you know, the home kid that comes off the bench, he could very easily start for me. But he's such a spark plug for us. He plays so hard, and probably if you ask anybody we play, they probably hate him the most because he <laughs> just gets in people's. He gets up in people's shirts, and they don't like it. You know, and he plays so hard. So, uh, just, I'm sitting there looking now because I go blank sometimes, but. Uh, Evan Moore's a senior that comes off the bench for us that plays plays a lot, and he's a he's a kid that we don't lose a beat defensively for sure. And I can he can guard anybody that we play, and that's kind of what we use him for. And that's what we feel like we're kind of good at. We can we can take breathers, and we can come in with people who can guard as good as anybody who came out. So. That's that's where we feel like we're kind of special in that area. Boy, you know, te- depth is so important at, at any level. But boy, when you've got depth at the one A level, that is really huge, Todd. It is. It is. You know, we had that in 2020, and I learned a lot then too. When you have that many kids, you know, you got to you got to find a way to make them realize how important they are, and they're all important to us. And you know, one kid's going to play about six minutes, another kid's going to play, you know, 26. So. That's just the way it is, and if they accept that, it's just, your team could be so good mm-hmm. if your team will accept that role. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, you've been doing it a long time down there now. you got over 400 career wins. Uh, you must still be having fun at it, huh? I love it, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, great. Can, uh, that's it's, great. Uh, it, you know, it's, it's, I look forward to it every day, and when I don't, I'll, I'll hang it up. But, yeah, I, this is – I love doing it. Yeah, hey the uh, the new rule this year on the on the free throws, the five uh, free throws in a quarter, and then it resets each quarter. <laughs> Has that played a role at all in your games this year? And what do you think about it? Like it? Don't like it? Or you're not sure? You know what? I I, I listened to a game, and I, you guys had that conversation. Yeah. In one of your games, you did, and I, I I'm sitting there thinking to myself, do I, I don't even have a good answer because I because I we've been on both sides of it, right? Where, I think the strategy of fouling in the first quarter, at the end of a quarter, I think it really comes into play. Mm-hmm. It's not it's not affected us in the varsity game, but I've seen it affect us in the freshman game and the JV game. Mm-hmm. So we kind of have a, a a rule that we do in our program now about how we're going to go about things. So you know, we did you know that just that just makes us think or change kind of what we think at the end of the first quarter or second quarter or third quarter, even though most times it was always towards the end of a game. Right. You know, when it comes to free throw shooting. But, yeah, I, I think it's going to give the advantage to that 50%, 60% free throw shooter who misses that first one and has that second chance. Right. I, I think you're going to see that where, you know, normally it would have been a rebound one and out, and it, they're going to get that second chance, and it's going to be a beneficial thing for that shooter. Yeah. That's what I think. Well, last night in the Casey Westfield Tuscola game, it, it came down to the end, and again, Casey Westfield had too many fouls to give, and they had to chase Tuscola right. around trying to foul him, you know, to, to send him to the line yeah. at the end. So it happened again. So Yeah, uh, you know, and, and that may be, and from a coaching standpoint, it's going to be different. But halfway through, if you see you could be in that situation, you may foul earlier than expected. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's an adjustment yeah, for all like of us, really. Game. Yeah, it's an adjustment it for is, all of us. It is. And, I think it's really affected the referees more than anything. 
watching them. There's so many times I see them going to take the ball out on the fifth foul Mm -hmm. instead of going to the line. It's like everybody has to remind them. I mean, I understand. They've been doing this for years. Sure. You know. So. Yeah. Well, Todd, we appreciate your time. Uh, Merry Christmas to you and your family. We look forward to seeing your team play on Tuesday down at Cesar, all right? I appreciate it. Appreciate uh, you having me, bud. All right. Take care. Talk to you soon. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. That is Todd Tripp, head coach of the Goreville Black Cats. They are the number one seed at the Cesar Valley Holiday Tournament, which begins on Tuesday. And uh, we'll be watching them play and be covering their team. And, uh, in fact, we'll be video streaming all of the first-round games of the Cessna Lear Tournament. So if you can't make it to Cessna, we sure hope you can. But if you can't make it there and you can't see some of the first-round games, we'll have all four of the first-round games for you on Tuesday. And then we'll have uh, the semis uh, the next day. And then we'll have the trophy games, third place and championship also the third day. So a lot of coverage coming your way at the Cessna Lear Holiday Tournament here on areasports.net. Stay tuned when we come back. We've got more for you here on this special edition of the Sports Couch right after this 30-second timeout. Tanger's Doggy Day Care. Your dog's home, away from home. Do you have a dog that is shedding? We provide de-shed treatments at Jagger's Doggy Daycare in Mount Vernon. De-shed treatments get rid of a lot of unwanted hair so it doesn't end up all over your house. Your dog will look better, feel great, and smell wonderful. Call and schedule a de-shed treatment for your dog at Jagger's Doggy Daycare in Mount Vernon. Jagger's Doggy Daycare. All right, welcome back to this special edition of the Sports Couch. You've had an opportunity to hear from all four of the coaches of the top four seeds of this year's Cesar Valley Holiday Tournament. You heard from Todd Tripp of Goreville. You heard from Dane Walter of Redbud. You heard from Anthony Lowry of Waltonville. And you've heard from John Niebergie of Altamont. Again, a reminder that uh, areasports.net will be there to provide play-by-play video coverage of all of the first round games of the tournament. We also plan to do the semifinal games as well as the third place and the championship game. So if you can't make it to Sessor for uh, some of that action, you can keep up with it here on our website, uh, video streaming live uh, and archived at areasports.net. Uh, we also will be bouncing back and forth down the road to the Pinckneyville tournament, which is uh, the most outstanding 2A tournament in Southern Illinois, bar none. You've got four state-ranked teams in that 16 field at Pinckneyville this year, and just a loaded lineup there. You've got, uh, I think, uh, eight or nine of the 16 teams have winning records. I mean, it is just going to be a, a knockdown dragout tournament. We'll be providing some coverage from that tournament as well, and including some of the trophy games at Pinckneyville as well as we bounce back and forth uh, between Sessor and Pinckneyville. Uh, longtime basketball official Ron Stannard, 30 years wearing the stripes, will be with me in the booth along with the former uh, basketball coach Brad Beatty, who uh, spent several years having some success at Weber Township with the Trojans. Uh, he'll be with me in the booth as well. So we'll bring the action your way from both Cesar Valier Tournament as well as the Pinckneyville Tournament. So um, that's a wrap on this special edition of the Sports Couch. Thanks so much for listening and joining us, and thanks to our sponsors for making it all possible. And we hope we see you in the gym at uh, both Cesar and at Pinckneyville. But again, if there's a game or two you can't make it to and we are covering it, check it out with us here on Areasports.net. Till then, so long and Merry Christmas.